everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to my latest video. I'm really hoping I can film this video uninterrupted. My five week old son, five weeks? He's not five weeks, he's seven weeks old. Baby brain. My seven week old son is currently literally asleep here, look. Literally there on the sofa. So I'm hoping I can film this uninterrupted before he wakes up, but we'll see. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Ellie. I am a mum of two. I have a four-year-old son called Leo and a seven-week-old baby called Cooper. And I have been asked time and time again over the last few weeks what my newborn must-have essential items are. I did a little IGTV on it a few months ago, but that was actually while I was pregnant. So having now had a newborn, then there's things that I forgot, there's things that I thought were important, but actually I've realized weren't that important. Um, so anyway, I wanted to do a new newborn essential video for you guys for my YouTube channel. So I have a list, I have a list. She has come prepared. And I'm literally just gonna take you down the list and then I'm gonna show you guys what I mean for a few of the things as well, if you haven't heard of any of these things. I'm going to link the products as much as I can in the description box as well. So if I've spoken about something and you wanna see what it is properly, or you wanna buy one yourself, I will try and link everything in the description box, but there might be some things that I can't find for whatever reason, but I will try my best. Okay, so let's get started. Right, the first two items that I'm gonna talk about in this video are bottle feeding relevant items. So if you are breastfeeding, then just don't worry about this bit, skip on a minute because these next two items are just about bottle feeding. I bottle feed my baby, so these are things that have been essential to me. I do think I'm gonna do a separate sort of bottle feeding tips and hacks video, um, but for now these are my two sort of top essentials. So the first one is the Tommy Tippy Perfect Prep Machine. If you don't know what this is, it literally looks like a coffee machine. Here it is here, and it basically is a really nifty little machine which will make your baby's bottle for you. So you can change the ounces at the top and you put your bottle in the little you know shelf bit that you can see here and it makes the bottle a perfect temperature for you so it's ready to drink. So the hot water goes in first, then you add your powder and you shake it up, then you put it back and it adds the cold water which is all filtered and sterile and ready to drink and then it's ready to go. So it is an absolute essential if you are bottle feeding. Your bottle is ready in seconds and babies are not patient when they want their bottle, they want it now. So I will link this for you. This is the older model. They do have a newer digital model now, but it was a bit more expensive and I had this older model with Leo and it really does the job. So I didn't see the point in, you know, going for the snazzy digital one. I just kept it with the older model and yeah, really, really happy with it. So my second bottle feeding newborn essential is the Tommy Tippy Travel Bottle Warmer. This was recommended to me a few weeks ago by my lovely followers because I was really struggling to know how to warm up Cooper's milk when we were out and about. Leo just used to take milk cold, like the ready-made apt milk bottles. He used to take those straight from the bottle just without me warming them up, but Cooper's a bit fussier. So this is so nifty. It's basically just a thermos. So you fill up this middle bit with boiling water and screw the lid back on. And then when you need it, you can pour out some boiling water into the really generous sized cup that goes over the top and then you can warm your bottle up in there. And I have been out and about for hours and hours and hours with this bottle warmer. I'd say up to eight hours and the water was still hot. And I managed to heat up maybe three or four bottles just using this one thermos. So it's an absolute essential for any bottle feeding mummies out there. Okay, so that's the bottle stuff out of the way. These are the rest of my newborn essentials. Okay, so the first one I thought of straight away is a nappy caddy. So if you don't want 
if you don't know what a nappy caddy is here is mine so it's basically a little basket with compartments that you can fill up with everything that you need for a nappy change so in my nappy caddy i obviously have a lot of nappies i have wipes i have bum cream and i also always keep a muzzy in mine as well just in case I can't find one, I know there's always one in the nappy caddy. So these are really, really helpful. And I would also recommend buying more than one. So I have one nappy caddy that lives downstairs and then one nappy caddy that lives upstairs. But I'm actually thinking about buying a third one. So I've got one in the living room, one in the kitchen and one upstairs because it just saves you having to move it around. You know where it is and once a week or every few days or whatever i will just take all my nappy caddies and go and stock them back up but it just makes your life that little bit easier you know where everything is and you don't have to be running around trying to find a nappy if you have a nappy situation okay my next essential so this is kind of like a two two part one basically you need somewhere for your newborn to sleep when you are downstairs so you'll have your upstairs crib that i'll talk about in a minute but when your baby is napping downstairs um, assuming they're not napping on you, they need somewhere to sleep safely. So there are two ways you could do this. When Cooper was really tiny, like a new newborn, he slept in a sleepy head. So this is a sleepy head. It's basically a sleeping pillow where they can snugly sort of fit inside. And then we put a blanket over him and he really enjoyed sleeping in there when he was like fresh from the womb you know like a real real newborn and they're also so handy because they're cushioned underneath so you can put it on a table or wherever you know just literally carry it around with you and for the first i'd say three weeks the sleepy head was really really useful for us i will just say because i know there's a bit of controversy about sleepy heads and whether they're safe or not so I will say it's not recommended that you leave the baby alone in the sleepy head, so always have them supervised if they are sleeping on a sleeping pillow like this. So when Cooper got to about three weeks, he was too big for the sleepy head. He's a big old boy. So in that case, for somewhere for them to sleep downstairs, I would recommend getting a little bassinet. So this is ours. This was gifted to me from Fisher Price and I will link it for you in the description box. And it's just your basic bassinet. It's a lot smaller than the crib that we have upstairs, which is great because it doesn't take up too much room in the living room. And the main thing I love about it, obviously I love that it's gray because it's nice and neutral, but I love the fact that it rocks. So I can put Cooper down in the bassinet and then I can sit on the sofa and just rock, rock, rock until he, until he falls asleep and he sleeps so so well in this bassinet he will sleep for hours in there so he obviously really likes it and while we're talking about beds i will now mention that you also need a crib for them to sleep in upstairs so you need some sort of bedside crib it's not recommended that babies go into their room for the first sort of few months of their life although obviously that's personal choice so they need somewhere to sleep in your bedroom so this is what i have my newborn sleeping in this is the baby elegance kangoo crib which was kindly gifted to me also and i highly recommend it's really spacious it also folds up um just in the middle it like folds up with one hand so if you were traveling or going to a hotel or something it would be really easy to take out with you um, Cooper sleeps brilliantly in it. The mattress is nice and firm. You want a relatively firm base with a newborn. And you know, when he was tiny, I used to tuck a blanket over him and over under the mattress and that worked really well. I just can't rate it enough. And the best thing is it also, similar to the downstairs bassinet, it also has the option to rock. So if he is struggling to get off at night, which generally he doesn't, but if he is, I can just gently rock the crib and rock him to sleep. But there are so many bedside cribs out there. So have a good look online, go into store and decide which one is the crib that suits you. So the last thing I'm gonna mention, which is um, relevant to beds and cribs, which is an absolute essential, is a waterproof mattress cover. So any sort of sleeping area, whether it's a downstairs bassinet or their bedside crib or their cot, wherever, make sure you've lined the mattress with a waterproof mattress cover these are so easy to come by you can get them in the supermarket i get mine in asda just down the road and they're nice and soft still they're not like plastic and rustly or anything they're you know lined and nice and soft 
but it's just reassuring that if there was ever a leaking nappy or a sick situation that you know your mattress is still clean and sanitary and <laughs> protected. So I make sure that, yeah, anywhere he sleeps has got a waterproof mattress protector just for any mishaps. So make sure you have got a range of thickness when it comes to blankets. So when they're really, really tiny newborn, it's not recommended they go in sleeping bags straight away. Um, this is just from what I've read online and what I was told by my midwife. So what I did with Cooper for the first few weeks is I would put him flat on his back in his crib or his bassinet or wherever it might be and fold a blanket in two and then tuck it under the mattress so it's nice and tight so you will want a range of blankets and a range of thickness obviously the weather can be all over the place so depending on how warm it feels you might just want a thinner cellular blanket or you might want a thicker fleecy blanket so just make sure that you've got that choice and that range so that every night you can decide what thickness you want when they get to a few weeks old, like Cooper is now seven weeks old and he has started sleeping in a sleeping bag. Um, and these are, they weren't so easy to come by when Leo was a baby, but now they are so accessible. You can get them in any supermarket. You can get really pretty ones now as well. I love this one with the whale print on the front. And yeah, he started kicking a lot more and rolling around. So the sleeping bags are perfect when they start to move a bit because obviously they can't kick them off. Okay, you will want to make sure that you have some sort of play gym for your baby. I know that sounds crazy because we're talking about newborns, but you wouldn't believe how quickly they can interact and they're interested to look around them. So this play gym I recommend so, so highly. This is made by Lovery, it was kindly sent to me and Cooper used it from honestly, like pretty much straight away, just a couple of weeks old because it came with all sorts of black and white sensory bits. So if you didn't realize babies can only see in black and white for the first few weeks of their life. So any sort of black and white pictures are really, really stimulating to them and you can clip the pictures onto the top of the play gym and then the baby can watch them. And he honestly just loves it so much, he still does now. So even though it seems a mile off, I would make sure that you have a play gym sort of ready to go because you wouldn't believe how quickly they like to lie on their back and look at things. And back to the black and white sensory stuff, that is definitely another newborn essential. So um, there's an Instagram shop that I love called Samuel Sensory and they do some brilliant black and white sensory boards and cards and toys and things. I also, um, I have my own business called Fun Learning Resources which has printable resources for babies and children. And we have printable newborn sensory things on there as well. So you can just print them straight from your printer and you could put them anywhere in the home, stand them up next to baby, whatever have you, to try and engage them. But yeah, the more black and white things you have, the better. So I've written baby carrier on my list because I would say it probably is a newborn essential and Cooper did love it in the first sort of couple of weeks of his life. We have this one which is the baby born mini um, baby carrier and I really recommend it. It's easy to put on, he feels nice and snug and secure when he's in it. But now he's got to sort of six, seven weeks old, he has decided that he really doesn't like the baby carrier. I think he's ready to be front facing in it. Um, but I just, I worry that his neck's just still not quite strong enough. So I'm kind of holding off on the baby carrier. I would recommend getting one because every baby is so different and he did enjoy it for the first sort of couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, unfortunately he's decided that he doesn't like it anymore. Okay, one thing you definitely need for bath time is a bath seat. So we have been using the Angel Care bath seat and I just can't recommend it enough. It is brilliant. The back is sort of, you know, has holes in, it's a bit meshed so that the water can soak through so that their back isn't cold. You know, their back is nice and wet as well because I remember there are some seats where we tried with Leo where you put him in the seat and he'd get a bit of a shock because his back would be cold whereas this one has holes in it so the water can get through he's ever so comfy in that seat he's always so happy in there and if you have an older sibling it's ideal because you know the newborn is safe in the seat and the older sibling can join them in the bath as well which is what we do every night 
So I really recommend getting a bath seat and I personally would recommend the Angel Care bath seat. Speaking of the bath, you also need to make sure that you have a bath thermometer. So there is a specific temperature that newborn baths should be. I believe it's 38 degrees. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 38 degrees, although I would have to check that. Oh, look, he's woken up just in time for the end of the video. So we have this one, which is the Tommy Tippy bath thermometer and it's great because it just floats in the water tells you what the temperature is and if it gets too hot it flashes red which is really useful and this one also doubles up as a room thermometer so my last newborn essential is a room thermometer so like i said my bath one just doubles up as a room thermometer so i'm just going to use that one in cooper's room but before, when I had Leo, I had the Grow Egg room thermometer, which was great. The only thing I would say about it is that it's really bright. So it would sort of light up his bedroom quite a bit, um, depending on what color the, the Grow Egg was. So it depends whether you want them sleeping in perfect darkness or not, because it does light up the room quite a bit. But yeah, it is really important you get yourself a room thermometer. That way you can measure, obviously, the temperature of the room and you'll know how you need to dress them for bed. So there you go, guys. That was my newborn essential list for any expectant mum or new mum. I hope it was helpful. I have tried to link as many products as I can in the description box below. Oh, he's come back to sleep. He's doing that thing where they sort of smile in their sleep. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel before you go and I'll see you guys in my next video.